All right, gentlemen, so let's get to it. Should the West continue to support uh, Ukraine? As always, we begin with our quick fire round, 30 seconds each to lay out your initial stance on the matter, and we take the conversation up from there. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Clifford D. May, please take the lead. Your 30 seconds are on. Yeah, I think it's absolutely essential that America and our European allies continue to support the Ukrainian people who are fighting for their freedom, for their sovereignty, for their independence, for their families, quite literally, uh, for their homeland. Uh, if there are those who are feeling fatigue, and these are not people who are on the battlefield, the Ukrainians are on the battlefield, right. Americans are not, Europeans are not. If you're feeling fatigue, have a stiff cup of black coffee. Um, <laughs> the last thing we should want in the U.S. or in Europe is for Vladimir Putin to win. That would be dreadful for all of us. All right. We'll obviously continue from that point in a split second. Uh, Dr. Beck, your, your thoughts? Well, I think the question was, should the West? I think we have a trilemma here, even if one grants the initial assumption that uh, Ukraine should win this conflict. So there's this objective, but set against this, we had the economic cost of the war, and then perhaps the risk of conflagration, even of nuclear conflagration. So I would urge caution. I think support should take into account the other two objectives. Last but not least, Ambassador Ayalon, your thoughts? Well, I think there is quite a unanimity here that the uh, short answer is yes, because too much is at stake here, Ellie, because uh, leaving uh, the Ukraine just to the device of uh, Putin and the Russians will mean a new world order. Uh, Europe and NATO will be under great risk. Taiwan, and I would also say even here, Israel. All right, and on that note, uh, gentlemen, let's uh, please feel free to interact from this point onwards to, to engage in a conversation. And, and Mr. May, I, I, I do want to begin with you. Um, will more Western weapons bring the war closer to an end? Is the Ukrainian counteroffensive at, at a point where it should, quote unquote, prove itself? No, it, it's not at a point where it should prove itself. The Ukrainians have not had all, all that they need. But we have, but with their courage, with a lot of blood spilled by Ukraine, spilled by the Ukrainians, they have prevented the, the Russian invaders from doing what they intended to do, which was, and still intend to do, which is take over the country. We're not doing this out of charity. We're doing this out of self-interest. And we need to understand that. Is it expensive? Well, yes and no. It, 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 consider that the U.S., which has spent more than the Europeans, uh, certainly as a percentage of GDP, but even in any other way, it's it's about 3.5 percent, 3.5 percent of Defense Department spending that has gone to this. The return on investment has been substantial. Wow. America's number two adversary, one could say the number one adversary of many European countries, has been decimated in terms of the number of tanks lost, the number of artillery, their military capabilities. Very important to keep in mind, if Putin wins, that's not the end of the day, just as it wasn't the end of the day after he annexed Crimea in 2014, after he took over two provinces of Georgia in 2008. If he wins in Ukraine, he will think, what's my next target? Because his goal is to restore the Russian slash Soviet empire. If we don't know that, we don't know anything about Vladimir Putin. You know, it reminds me, Mr. May, uh, a phrase my grandmother used to uh, uh, say that there's a difference between high price and expensive, not the same here. Dr. Beck, your take. Well, uh, I'm not quite so gung-ho. Um, I think it's clear that without Western support, uh, Ukraine couldn't have withstood the initial uh, uh, Russian operation. Now, should the West uh, 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 step up armed support? Well, uh, the idea is Ukraine should win that conflict. I'm not actually quite sure what that, uh, what this may mean. Uh, I also think it's very important not to underestimate Russia's resolve in this conflict. Uh, I do not think that it will be possible to defeat Russia in Ukraine. I think the Russians are of the view that the very great deal is at stake here, and I can only emphasize the very great risk of conflagration if ever Ukraine were put into a position where they could push back Russia 
to the original frontiers. I think that'd be a very dangerous situation. Ambassador Ayalon, help us clear the clutter here, if you will. Well, I think at the end of the day, what we see really is um, getting into a war of attrition, if you may. If there was any hope in the West that the, uh, um, let's say, the um, spring uh, offense of Ukraine would change or, or would change the game and uh, maybe push the Russians back. This did not happen. The Ukrainians do not have the wherewithal to do it. On the other hand, the Russians are also themselves quite fatigued and exhausted. But what we see here really is a, a, quite a global split where China is supporting but from afar. China is mm. not quite ready for many reasons to give support, direct support, militarily to, to Russia. But the Russians use today the Iranians, North Korean, and other allies, which have become, I would yeah. say, the new uh, axis of, uh, of evil. And with that, if the West does not uh, continue with its own alliance against uh, Ukraine, then I believe it's going to be uh, a major uh, win for the um, the axis of uh, evil a on a moral ground but also on territorial and political ground as well yeah the west and the rest so to speak uh, uh mr uh, uh, may i do want to circle back to you and uh, and insist on, on on this point because there is a question whether the the war will ultimately be determined on the battlefield yeah, uh, wars are generally determined on the battlefield and then the diplomacy actually follows. At the point at which you get to uh, negotiations is the point at which Vladimir Putin decides that Western resolve is a match for his. He doesn't believe that right now. It's not a bad bet on his behalf. He thinks he continues to fight. He refuses to compromise. Don't forget, uh, when this war started, everybody was betting on Russia and they thought it would take a few days, maybe a few weeks at most. Um, Volodymyr uh, Zelensky said, I don't want to be exfiltrated. I don't want to leave. Give me the ammunitions to defend my homeland. Right. The West complied. And what happened? 83% or so of, of Ukraine is now under Ukrainian control. If there are ever negotiations, you can, they can, there can be decisions on what happens to the Crimea and parts of Donetsk. But you're not going to get to negotiations so long as Putin believes he can do what he wants to do, which is repeal the most fundamental of international laws, and the most fundamental of international laws since World War II has been that you don't wipe out a neighboring state through force of arms. If that's gone, all international law is gone. Dr. Beck, is that notion gone? Well, um, I'd just like to make one point, Please. Um, which is has been very forcefully, uh, forcefully uh, been made by profession, uh, Professor John Mearsheimer. He simply asserts that every great power uh, uh, claims a sphere of influence. So I think we should ask ourselves what the United States would be doing um, if, say, um, one of its neighbors were to move close to an organization or alliance that it itself, uh, it itself regards it, uh, as a security threat. Now, again, uh, my second consideration is the cost of war. I think Ukraine is gradually becoming depopulated, and the uh, cost of the war is having a crippling effect within Europe. The question we have to ask ourselves is whether we'd uh, like to get to a situation where Ukraine would have lost most of its population, whether by emigration or uh, um, mm. through uh, casualties, and secondly, whether Europe is in an economic position to sustain stepping up military and financial assistance for, uh, uh, for uh, Ukraine yeah. um, quite considerably. Well, uh, well Ambassador Ayalon, it seems Can it's I... many... Uh, please, please, Mr. Me, yeah. yeah. Look, there is no conceivable way that Vladimir Putin considered NATO an aggressive alliance that was threatening him. You know that's not true. I know everyone knows that's not true. And Ukraine was not going to get into NATO, not least because Germany wouldn't have voted for it. And you have to have unanimous consent from all NATO members. So that is just absolute nonsense. Now, I want to ask you also, as a NATO member, which Germany is, 
if Putin succeeds here, and then he decides, you know what, I have to take southern Lithuania because I need a land bridge to the Russian province called Kaliningrad. What are Germans going to do? Or are you okay with the, because what Putin would like to do is absolutely crumble NATO. He may be able, if he could do that, are you okay with that? Do you think NATO should dissolve? Is that all right with you? Could I briefly answer this? Of course, he was asking you, Dr. Beck. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, well, two points, really. Realistically speaking, I think, and if we take into account the North Stream um, sabotage episode, I think we have to raise a serious question whether Germany is an independent actor in foreign policy. Uh, second point, uh, um, focusing purely on Germany's economic interests. The truth is that Mrs. Merkel and this government have left Germany in a position where it's highly dependent on Russian gas. From an economic point of view, I do not think that Germany can afford supporting Ukraine for much longer. I'm afraid so. We have we we were too dependent on Russia. Uh, all right, and on that note, uh, whether you agree or, or disagree, it seems that m m many more Europeans are asking themselves uh, those uh, uh, these very uh, questions. Gentlemen, we're taking a very short break, but obviously we have uh, so much more to unpack uh, right after, so uh, do not go uh, anywhere. A few minutes and we're, we're back with the summit.